So I've got two guns with me today. They look exactly the same, they feel exactly the same, but are they really the same? And why am I so excited about this gun on my right? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So we all know the Air Arms S410 TDR. It's been around for a good few years now and it's become quite a popular gun. And about a year ago, I actually filmed an unboxing video right on this deck um, where I, I took the TDR out of its box. I, t I went over some of the features. Um, one of those features was that this was a 12 foot pound gun and it was only available in sub 12 foot pound. In other words, the, the UK legal limit, um, which was obviously fairly disappointing being in a country where we don't really have any power restrictions. And I'm sure you Americans and people from you know, other parts of the world that don't have power restrictions would have felt the same. Well, the good news is that the TDR is now available in high power or FAC. And I've got one of them right over here. This is a 22 caliber, 30 foot pound gun. It's nice and compact. It's got exactly the same um, build as the 12 foot pound TDR, but obviously just tuned to a higher power. So I'm very excited about this gun, we're going to look at it today, we're going to go over some of the, the features of the gun and um, we're also going to do some accuracy testing and just talk about you know, what this gun is good for and some of the drawbacks of it as well. So the very first thing to note and probably one of the most important things is that TDR stands for Takedown Rifle. So we all know the very popular Air Arms S410, it's one of the most well-known air guns around the whole world and this is the slightly less well-known takedown version of that gun. In other words, this, the back part of this, this gun can, can come apart, the silencer can come off with a, a simple um, Allen key change and it fits into a really, really small, really compact carry case and that's what makes this gun unique. Now the very very first thing that I want to actually go into depth about here is the ergonomics of the gun and the, the practicality of it because I think that is this gun's real strength as opposed to the other models of S410 and S510. So obviously the biggest point in terms of practicality is the fact that it can be folded away into a small carry case but there's a lot more to this gun than just that. Even when this gun's assembled it becomes a very practical, very comfortable rifle to shoot and when I say comfortable you'd expect a gun that's made to be taken down to be slightly less comfortable um, than a gun that's designed to be, you know, to, to custom fit to your body like for example the S510 Ultimate Sporter. And to an extent that's true, you don't have the same adjustability on the cheek piece that the Ultimate Sporter has, you don't have the same um, grip here in the front, um, the grip's a bit shorter, but in other ways this gun is actually one of the most comfortable guns I've ever used. For example, I think this is, this is one of the things that I want to focus on here, is the pistol grip. Now I've had a few friends shoot this gun as well, so it hasn't just been me, and everyone who shot this gun has, has mentioned the pistol grip and said, wow, this pistol grip is extremely comfortable. Now, the stock doesn't have any fancy checkering on it or, you know, fancy engravings on it. All it has in terms of, you know, changes to the wood is this stippling. Um, I'd call it like a, it's just a rough texture with a few indentations here. And what this does is it just gives that extra grip. It doesn't necessarily look beautiful, but when you hold this gun in your hands, it's just got such an inc incredible grip. Um, and I've actually got fairly big hands. My hands aren't small, so you'd expect me to prefer pistol grips that are slightly bigger, but that's just not the case. Uh, my hand just wraps around this gun perfectly. It's one of the easiest guns to hold. It's so light, I can actually hold it out with one arm, even though it's a, th a 30 foot pound gun, so that's, that's pretty crazy. And even though this um, stock is, is fairly short here, and even though I've got a bipod fitted, the balance of the gun is, is fairly far back, being such a short gun, which means that I'm actually able to, to bring it to my shoulder and the, the center of balance is, is right here, right in front of the trigger. So the fact that the, the bar pod's on the front there doesn't actually change the place where I would keep my hand. This is honestly one of the most comfortable guns I've ever had the pleasure of holding and shooting with. Even the, the cheek piece is pretty much in the perfect place. Um, for me, it doesn't need adjusting. You might have to get fairly low um, scope rings so that the, the scope isn't too high so your eye can naturally look straight through the scope when your cheeks resting on here um, but aside from that I'd say there's nothing that I'd really change about the gun and even though that this is a really compact takedown rifle it's just an absolute an absolute joy to hold it's light it's comfortable uh, I couldn't ask for anything more 
Build quality is obviously a, a big point to look at. Um, if you're paying a lot of money for a gun, you're gonna want to know that it'll last you a very long time. And you can trust me when I say that this rifle is built very well because I've literally just arrived back from the Air Arms factory about two weeks ago. I went all the way to the UK. I watched how this gun was made. I went through all the processes of how each individual part is machined from, from high quality materials and then assembled. And I can tell you one thing, this gun will last you a lifetime if you look after it properly. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the build quality of this gun. So I'm not even gonna go any further on that. I'll just believe me when I say it's a well-built gun. Triggers on pretty much all Air Arms rifles are very, very well made. And out of the box, I'm not sure I like this trigger too much. It's, it's fairly difficult to tell when that, when that second stage begins. In other words, it's not extremely crisp as far as triggers go. But the good news is that it is fully adjustable. So if you, if you take the time to tweak the trigger, you'll be able to get it to exactly where you want it. So that that's, uh, obviously gives the gun good marks in that department. Adjustable trigger is a really good thing because obviously you want to to tailor the trigger pull to your requirements. And this gun does offer that. One thing that people don't necessarily like is that there's a safety knob that's on the trigger itself. I don't really mind this because I don't really use the safety much. And when I do use it, I'm, I'm very used to it. But I can understand why, why people would be unhappy with it, especially someone shooting the rifle for the first time. I'm sure someone could easily disengage the, the safety by mistake and pull a shot off by mistake. So perhaps that's something that Air Arms does need to look at in the future. Now the newer S500 and S510 models of Air Arms rifles all feature the side lever cocking. And I must say, I do think this is the cocking mechanism of the future, if I can say that. It's smoother, it's easier to use, but there's something about a bolt action that I still really, really love. And the bolt action on this rifle is as, as good as they get in terms of, of air rifle bolt actions. It's incredibly smooth, it never gets stuck or feels jammed, and although the 12 foot-pound rifle was much easier to cock, obviously having a lighter hammer spring, this 30 foot-pound version is really not too bad. Now, once you load it for the first time, it does feel a bit stiff, and that's just how it is. When you cock a springer for the first time, you think it's really stiff, when you draw a bow for the first time, you think it's hard to pull back, but the more you do it, you get used to it. And I can honestly tell you, once you load this, once you get used to loading this gun, it's an absolute dream. Now answering the question about muzzle report is not quite as straightforward as I might like it to be. And that's because in the US, you've got some pretty strange laws about um, silences and, and moderators. So as far as I know, the TDRs that are, are shipped to the US are fitted with a muzzle brake instead of a silencer like this one, which means that that rifle will bark very loudly. Um, it's unfortunate, but I'm sure there must be some way you can make a plan about it. Surely there's some way that you can buy some kind of silencer in the US. With all your other gun laws being so relaxed, I'm pretty sure there must be some way you can do it. <laughs> but aside from that, there's a new silencer out now called the Q-Tech, also made by Air Arms, which is incredibly quiet much, much, much quieter than this one. Um, but unfortunately, because of the, the parts that are used to produce the silencer, it is quite expensive. And I think it's for that reason that that silencer isn't included with this kind of standard. It would, it would raise the overall cost of the rifle. However, the option is there to purchase the QTEC silencer if you do want something a little bit quieter. It's more or less the same size as this. It slides over and attaches on exactly the same as this. And it really makes a huge difference. The magazine that, that comes with the TDR is the standard 10-shot Air Arms magazine. Um, it's 10-shot whether it's in 22 caliber, 25 or 177. And there's nothing fancy about it. It's a very simple magazine. The, the cycling mechanism of the magazine is, is on the rifle itself, which means that it's not that expensive to buy a spare magazine because the cycling mechanism isn't inside the, the, the magazine itself like it is on the day state magazine, for example, with all those fancy springs and levers and all of that. Um, unfortunately, the Air Arms TDR does not come standard with a spare magazine, which is one of the things I'm quite disappointed about because of the cheek piece, which has magazine holders in it. If you're gonna give uh, a gun with, a, with magazine holders, I think it's not too harsh to expect 
at least one spare magazine to be provided. Um, this is something I'd really like to see. I mean, these magazines aren't extremely expensive to produce. Adding at least one spare magazine would just make the whole package a little bit more complete. Um, I think to be able to buy this gun and have, and have the spare magazine sitting right here as standard would be really, really nice. Now the bipod that I've got fitted to this gun at the moment is not standard with the rifle. I've just attached this um, to the accessory rail, which is standard with the rifle. Um, but if you're going to want to attach a bipod, then you will need to get a swivel stud that attaches to the accessory rail or some kind of Picatinny rail um, so that you can actually attach it. There's no ways that you can drill anything in the end of the stock because this end bit is metal, but the nice thing about this rail is that it allows you to fit one of those studs that clamps on with an allen key and you can actually slide it forward or backwards to wherever you want it on the stock and this is great if you've got more than one kind of bipod um, some bipods attach further on the gun some bipods attach further in and an accessory rail which allows you to actually move that stud forward and backwards um, is a really great idea The power is adjustable on this gun, in fact it's really easy to adjust, there's a little knob that you can turn by hand and then if you find a power that you liked you can take the stock off and there's a little allen key at the bottom that you can tighten to lock the power in place. The only problem with the adjustable power on this gun though is that it's a transfer port adjustment which means that when you turn the power down, you, although you may lower the velocity of the gun, you don't save a lot of air because you're not adjusting the, the hammer spring, in other words, um, how much the valve opens and how long the valve is open for, which is one of the, the primary ways of conserving air, but you just make the transfer port smaller, which means that there's more resistance when the air is trying to get through into the barrel. So, for example, if you had to put this gun, turn it down to, to shoot at 12 foot-pounds and put it up against the 12 foot-pound version of this gun and shoot strings over the chronograph, you'd find that you get a lot more shots with the 12 foot pound version and that is obviously one of the drawbacks about the power adjustment but you I mean I can't fault it I can't fault it too much at least it's there at least you've got the option of turning the power down if you really want to and now for my favorite part of the review performance and accuracy this is the most important part guys so let's head out to the range let's do some accuracy testing and shoot a full string over the chronograph and see how this gun performs. A chronograph is a vital piece of equipment to have if you really want to get the best results from your gun. I won't show you the whole process because it can get rather boring but here's the final result. The TDR string is in blue. For this string I started at 200 bar and stopped at 100. If you want to have any accuracy at all, you need to be careful to stay within about 30 feet per second of your power curve's peak. This will ensure that the pellet's trajectory is more or less the same for each shot. This shot string gives us about 17 usable shots. Now, I can't say I was disappointed with this because it's exactly what I expected, but nonetheless, I really wish that the curve could be a little bit flatter. But anyway, on to the accuracy testing. Okay, so we've got a, a 25 yard range straight ahead of us here and a 50 yard range in that direction. So it should be a, a pretty, good, um, pretty good way of telling how, how accurate this gun is. I think we're not gonna go to 200 with this gun because I don't think it's really a, a 100 yard gun. Um, so we've got the, the TDR here in the, in the carry case. We're gonna take it out. And then we've got the um, high speed camera and the, the Eagle Vision mount which will make it really easy for me to just connect this to the back of the gun and you'll be able to see exactly what I see through the scope at 20 times magnification. We should be able to see the pellet moving towards the target and we'll be able to see exactly how stable the pellet is in flight, which is really, really, really important. So let's go ahead and take this gun out of the box and put it together. It's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> see, I've got a few extras in here as well. I've got the, the bipod, ton of pellets and spare magazines. It's incredibly simple. This back piece just fits right in there. Comes together. Tightens down by hand. And then the silencer slips over the end 
and with half a turn of the Allen key, it's nice and tight. There you go, it's as simple as that. I'm actually going to fit the um, bipod on right now. This obviously doesn't come with the gun, but if you get a sling stud fitted to the end of the gun, bipod basically just clips on as easy as that, tightens down, flips out, and that right there is a really stable shooting platform. It should help us hugely today when we shoot these groups, so let's do it. The Eagle Vision mount is a huge upgrade to the Orion Steadypix mount that I'd been using before and really saved me a lot of time. It was just a matter of screwing the adapter onto the eyepiece of my Hawk scope, sliding the camera over and then adjusting the magnification and parallax on the scope. Okay, the wind has actually just picked up quite a lot, so it's, it's fairly windy today. I don't think it will affect the 25-yard the groups too much, but you might see on the on the 50-yard the groups that there might be a few shots going off to the side, but we'll, we'll see how we go. I don't think it'll be too bad. The first thing I noticed when I started shooting at 25 yards was that this gun recoils quite a lot more than any of my other rifles. This comes down to the fact that it's a really light gun. Unfortunately, high recoil is just one of the drawbacks to purchasing a really light rifle, but let's see how the group turned out. Right, there you go. It's not too bad at all. One shot that went slightly lower than the rest, but the majority of the group is, is fairly tight. Now, let me just get the, the target from, from the, the S510 Extra that I've got over here. I shot this target a few days ago at exactly the same range. And you can see that the group is a fair bit smaller than the group I just shot now with, with a TDR. Now these guns are shooting at more or less exactly the same power, but the difference with the S510 Extra is that it's, it's, a, it's a heavier gun, which means that it's much easier to keep still when you take a shot. That's why I say that the TDR is not necessarily a long range gun. Um, obviously also because of the, the, the bell curve issue um, and the consistency issue, but I think a huge factor is the weight of the gun. A light gun will be very, very difficult to keep still when you're taking those shots. And that's why the S510 is shooting better groups than the TDR. But it's not such a big difference, so I'm pretty happy with this group. At 50 yards, it's much harder to see exactly where the pellets are landing, but we are able to see how they fly, and it looks like there might be a bit of pellet wobble. It's very possible that the barrel just desperately needed a clean. Nonetheless, the wobble didn't seem to cause any serious flyers, and human error was probably more of a problem than the barrel itself. Okay, so we've got our, our 50 yard target over here. I'm fairly happy with that. I think, you know, all the shots in the blue there at 50 yards is, is really decent. If that was a, a pigeon's head, um, the pigeon would be dead uh, five times out of five. So I'm happy with that. But again, just to, to show you here, this is a target shot, I think it was two days ago with the, the S510 Extra at exactly the same spot, um, shooting at exactly the same power. And you can see those, those shots are a little bit tighter than the TDR. Now, one other factor to consider is the fact that I was shooting with a scope cam, um, and with the S510 I wasn't shooting with a scope cam, but the truth of the matter is I actually prefer shooting with a scope cam because you don't have parallax error, and you don't have your cheek against the, the cheek piece either, which can also actually contribute to, to bad accuracy. I actually like shooting with a scope cam, so I'm not going to use that as an excuse for today's shooting. So I think the conclusion of the matter is that the TDR is not quite as accurate as the S510 Extra, um, especially at, at long ranges and I think that's pretty much down to the fact that it's it's light and it, the smaller air cylinder means that the bell curve isn't going to be as consistent um, but I'm happy with that it did exactly what I, I expected it to do so this gun performed pretty much exactly as I was expecting it to at the range and over the chronograph it wasn't quite as accurate as the S510 Extra, but I think that there are other things that it brings to the table, like its compact design, its ability to be packed away, just the small details that make it something that you really want to hold on to for the rest of your life. There's something special about this gun. So let's recap quickly. Positives about this gun, the things that I like. Well, it's, it's built really well. It's fairly quiet. It's very light and pointable. It's a nice compact design. It can be packed away in a very, very nice carry case, which is included with the gun. Negatives, 
uh, I'd say that probably it, it could do with quite a few extra shots per fill. Um, I know it's a small air cylinder, but there are other guns with air cylinders just as small as this that are way more efficient than this. And it's not that the gun necessarily needs a regulator, it's just that the, the valve and hammer design of this gun um, is wasting a, a fair bit of air, and I think that's because of hammer bounce. So there are ways to fix this. I would really like to see air arms fix some of these, these issues so that I can get more than 50 shots per fill, um, because I believe when I'm out doing pest control jobs, I do need more than 15 shots per fill. But aside from that, that's the only thing I would really change. Everything else about this gun is, is absolutely fantastic. And this is definitely one that I'll be, I'll be holding on to, hopefully for the rest of my life. If you're in South Africa and you are interested in this gun, you can check out airgunwarehouse.co.za. They are my go-to shop for anything airgun. They are very reliable, they are quick to answer your emails, and they, they know what they're talking about as opposed to some of the other gun shops out there. If you're not in South Africa, you can go to the Air Arms website and you can check their list of, of um, distributors around the world and find which one's closer to you and give them a call. This is definitely a gun that you want to look at if you're in the market for something that um, is easy to, to walk around with and, and hunt with. I really hope this was helpful and informative. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.